The Redmi K30 is here. Redmi finally unveiled it today in China. And most of what we covered in our leaks and rumors video, they've actually come true. But there are some new interesting things that have come to light as well. The biggest of which is the price. So let's go ahead, take a look at all that and more in today's video. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech. And if you do end up liking what you see here, please consider turning on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Let's now get this video started. So guys, before we start, a small little disclaimer, my throat is still not fine. So it's not the, it's not a problem with the audio. Uh, I mean, a lot of you guys had that question in the comments, which is why I'm just making it clear. It's just my throat is a little messed up. So please bear with me. I should hopefully be uh, better soon. Any which ways, now for the most part, like I said, my leaks and expectations video was on point. So let's start right there. What were the things that we got right? Well, there are two versions of the Redmi K30, uh, just like we heard. One's a 4G variant, the other is the 5G variant. They both look the same. This here is a glass sandwich build held together by a metal frame in between. And the rumors were true. This is Gorilla Glass 5 that Redmi has gone with for both sides. The back, as we saw in the renders, it's got this Mate 30 esque circular pattern where the cameras are housed. And both variants, they have quad camera setups. More on that later. There's a distinctive 5G logo here for the 5G version. The back glass, it's frosted, much like what we've seen with the OnePlus 7T. Talking about the OnePlus 7T, there's a high refresh rate display here for the uh, Redmi K30 as well. But this is 120Hz. And that's not just for the 5G variant, it's for both variants. So that's great news. As per the rumors, uh, we were expecting an AMOLED panel, but that doesn't seem to be the case. This here is a 6.67 inch IPS LCD panel. It's a full HD plus resolution that we've got here. It's got that dual camera punch hole to the top. And since it's IPS LCD, the fingerprint scanner cannot be underneath the display, which is why Redmi is moved it under the power button here to the side. Uh, talking about the buttons and placements, the headphone jack is still present. There is support for memory expansion via microSD and both phones come with NFC support too. As far as internals go, the 4G K30 comes with the Snapdragon 730G chip, a marginal upgrade over the Snapdragon 730 on the Redmi K20. The 5G K30 on the other hand, it brings with it a more substantial upgrade in the form of a Snapdragon 765 chip, 7 nanometer chip, a premium mid-range chip, a new chip from Qualcomm. Xiaomi claims a 10% CPU and 40% GPU boost over the K20 Snapdragon 730. The X52 5G modem inside is supposed to be able to theoretically support speeds up to 3.7 Gbps down and 1.6 Gbps up. Well, that's nice to hear. We aren't gonna be seeing 5G adoption for a while here in India at least. So I highly doubt that variant is gonna end up here. Anyway, what is good news for us is the fact that unlike what we heard with the rumors, the 4G version is not taking a cut with battery life or rather battery capacity. Both phones are getting the same 4,500 milliamp hour battery. The 5G version gets us, I mean, slightly faster charge speed, 30 watt uh, charging support. The 4G, 27 watt charging support. As for RAM storage, Redmi offers four options for both uh, 4G and 5G variants, uh, 664, 6128, 8128, and 8256. Uh, the 64 gig, uh, 64 gig is gonna be UFS 2.1, the rest UFS 3, uh, this is not confirmed. Uh, at least that's what I think it is. Uh, so again, I will clarify this in the comments and the description, so check that space. As for colors, the K30 is available in red, blue, and purple. The 5G version gets an extra color, white. Now, another difference is with the cameras. Now, before we talk about that, let's talk about the sensors that both versions share. They do share three of the four sensors. The primary here is a 64 megapixel sensor with the f1.89 lens. This is Sony's new IMX686. It's a 1 by 1.7 inch sensor with 0.8 micron sized pixels that become uh, 1.6 micron sized pixels effectively once you account for the 4 by 1 pixel binning. Along with that, we are gonna get an 8 megapixel ultra wide sensor, a 2 megapixel depth sensor, and a dedicated macro camera. The macro camera is where the 4G and 5G variants differ. We get a 2 megapixel macro with the 4G, 
a 5 megapixel macro with the 5G and those are the sensors that are different that, that are different the selfie camera is a 20 megapixel snapper and the secondary here is a 2 megapixel depth sensor so what do you think about the punch hole uh, what do you think about moving from amoled with a pop-up camera moving from that all screen design uh, to a lcd with a dual punch hole thoughts do you feel it's worth it given the move to 120 hertz anyway the last difference here is of course the pricing. Redmi kind of surprised us all with the price here. The 4G variant of the Redmi K30, it starts at just 15.99 yuan, which converts to about 16,000 rupees, while the 5G variant starts at 19.99 yuan, or just about 20,000 rupees. That's basically the same price at which the K20 launched in China last year. At that price, the Redmi K30 5G is the cheapest 5G smartphone available right now and that is by quite a huge margin. So we expect that it should create quite a huge wave in the Chinese markets, forcing other manufacturers to jump into the fray with cheaper 5G devices of their own. As for the Indian market, even the K30 4G at 18 or some 18,000 or something like that, it still feels like a nice option given the higher refresh rate display, better optics and battery life and a more powerful chip, marginal as it is, all on paper at least. So what do, you, what do you guys feel? Is this a phone you'd like to see in India? If yes, what do you think would be a fair price uh, for the K30 4G? Would you like to see the K30 5G here in India? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I will be getting my hands on this phone really soon. And once I do, I will come out with more coverage on this. And with that, we get to the end of this quick little video. As always, if you found it uh, interesting, go ahead, drop a like, subscribe, and ring that bell to turn on notifications. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.